Hey guys, it's Liv here, and in today's video, I want to discuss some Pokemon that I think have absolutely terrible abilities and how to make them actually viable and competitive. I asked this question to you guys on Twitter, and I got a lot of great responses, as well as some from Discord as well. So if you guys enjoy this type of content and you want to see more like it, make sure to leave a like below and subscribe. And since we'll be doing these every Wednesday, comment down below what question you want to see next. And otherwise, uh, make sure as well click the link in the description to get next week's question, which would be... If you have the ability to buff one Pokemon with 25 plus in any stat or any combination of stats you want, what would it be and why? So you can either comment those down below, leave them on the thread, or whatever really. Uh, the point is, as long as I have the responses, I'll make sure to include them in next week's video. But with that said, let's get into what you guys suggested for some options for improving Pokemon abilities and how to make them actually good. I'll start off with the one that I gave as an example, uh, being Smeargle, which would be giving it Oblivious. I think giving Smeargle Oblivious would be a great option to help around Taunt users since it's typically one of the best ways to actually beat Smeargle right now. Whereas right now, it's, it's other abilities you actually do get on Smeargle. Uh, you have a few different options that, none of which are really that great in my personal opinion. Uh, for one, you have Own Tempo, which isn't really that useful for Smeargle by any means considering Smeargle already has no real attack stat and no real need to be attacked. The best use you get out of this is the fact you can't get confused. Uh, otherwise, you have Technician, which is kind of cool on fake out sets at least. Uh, same for boosting Nuzzle by a little bit. And then you have Moody. Uh, Moody is a pretty good ability on this, to be fair. But typically in singles, Moody is banned in a lot of tiers. And on top of that as well, when you have the option to really actually make sure you can always get off your status off, I do think it's a little more valuable on Smeargle personally. While Moody is incredible on Baton Pass sets, I think that for majority of Smeargle sets, Oblivious would be a pretty good option. Since this would stop the potential for Taunt, or really any other way that would stop statuses, you could get up your Hazards pretty easily, you can get up Opposing Taunts even pretty easily. Uh, some other options, I know this is a set that I posted, but you could always do stuff like Stealth Rocks, Spikes, really whatever you wanted to. Even the options like Spore would be pretty easy to manage when you have Oblivious. So with that said though, let's get into our next option, which comes courtesy of Mia from Twitter. Uh, thank you Mia for this option, which would be Prankster on Jumpluff. And honestly, I like this idea a lot. Giving Jumpluff Prankster would be amazing for a lot of status options. Uh, this was one of the sample spreads from last generation actually with Jumpluff, which is a Sword Sand Strength Sap, Sleep Powder, and Acrobatic set. Uh, that was meant to mostly capitalize on the fact that the really low tiers don't really have good flying switch ins. And I think that a Prankster set could actually take advantage of this pretty well. You'd be able to get off Prankster Sword Stances, which doesn't really matter a ton, but the two things that would matter a lot would be Prankster Sleep Powder and Prankster Strength Sap, both of which could be used to help ease your time setting up against physical attackers or really just any sort of other Pokemon that you could put to sleep. And then you can start going for Acrobatic Shenanigans once you boost up pretty easily. Uh, you can always swap out Acrobatics for some other attack, and in that case I would probably throw Heavy Duty Boots on Jump Luff. But the point is, is, you do have the option, in my personal opinion, to really start snowballing with this Pokemon. Because it could actually be pretty cool as far as a low tier option goes. Now, I don't think this would make Jumpluff some top tier Pokemon or anything. It does sadly miss out on a few really good status options that could actually make it really good in VGC. For example, Tailwind, it would have a lot of competition with Whimsicott, since Whimsicott does actually get Tailwind and this does not. But if you were to give Jumpluff Tailwind, in tandem with Prankster, this could actually be a really good VGC menace as well because it does get a lot of other utility. Even still, you do get a lot of cool options outside of Tailwind though. Options like Rage Powder for example, as well as Sleep Powder, and the two together could be still really annoying. So I do think a Jump Off would still have a place, and I think a Prankster would actually be a really cool buff to this Pokemon. Next up though, we get a suggestion courtesy of Real GK Pure on Twitter, uh, being to give Relicamp huge power and to give it some options to actually do some damage. Now, uh, I do have to take a book a uh, page out of my good pal CB Marks' book, which is the Ultra Sun and Moon dex entry for Rallicanth, which is the reason it hasn't changed at all in 100 million years is that it's apparently already a perfect life form. Uh, I'm a huge Rallicanth supporter. Uh, I know this is a huge, 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 amazing mon right here. This mon is perfect as it is, but huge power would be pretty cool. Um, I think that huge power wouldn't even actually break this Pokemon, shockingly enough, considering the fact that uh, apparently in OU there are actually a lot of switch ins to huge power relicanth for a choice scarf set, and if you're running banded, you're way too obnoxiously slow. Uh, to be fair, I don't know how surprised I am by this, because Mega Mawile was actually able to survive in OU, and that Pokemon had pretty similar speed, a lot better of a typing, and a higher attack set in tandem. Uh, also, it had priority, which was a huge thing for it. Uh, so, this would have to run a scarf set. To put it in perspective, 
Uh, if you were to get intimidated by Landorus, you can't even actually guarantee the KO on it anymore. Um, and Landorus could potentially just outpace you as well with a Scarf and Revenge you. There are a lot of Pokemon that could outpace you even as Jolly. You would not even outpace base 110s. So I don't even think this would actually be that broken, but it would be something that could actually give Relicanth some really good usage in my opinion. However, at the same time though, I think that actually running Relicanth, I think that really, the, the biggest thing Relicanth would actually probably need would just be a stat buff or some moveset buffs. I don't think ability would make a huge difference on it sadly, but it would be a cool option at least, and I think it could give us some really good lower tier viability for certain. In a tier where something like a Ferrothorn Slowbro Toxpex isn't running around, this could actually have some merit. Next up though, we do have a suggestion from Henry, which is to give Archaeops anything besides Defeatist. Now, I did talk this over with a few people to see what ability would be at least probable in OU without being obnoxious, and we kind of agreed that Rockhead would be the best solution. Uh, Rockhead would give you an option to run physical Archaeops again, and make it really good too, since you could just spam Head Smash. You would also have options like U-Turn, Earthquake, and Dual Wingbeat that could help with a lot of common OU Pokemon. You could even swap out Dual Wingbeat for something like a Heat Wave if you're worried about Ferrothorn, which could be pretty cool. This is still a really good mixed attacker. And without having to worry about Defeatist, both your offenses are fairly viable options. Uh, one thing I will say though, is I do think Archaeops would still actually fairly enough, uh, be fairly balanced. You're getting outpaced by a lot of other Pokemon without running a Choice Scarf, and if you're running he not Heavy Duty Boots, you're susceptible to hazards. There's still some really good priority options. For example, Weavile is one of the best Pokemon of the tier. And if we were to take Archaeops and see how well it takes on a Weavile Ice Shard, uh, Banded Weavile Ice Shard nearly guarantees the KO, though for what it's worth, this is Adamant. But at the same time though, Adamant is literally the first set that comes up for Banded Weavile in the calcs. So I did just want to mention that while it is technically only possible with Adamant, at the same time though, that's just standard Weavile right now with Choice Band. Uh, the point being is, that even I mean, even without uh, adamant nature, you still do get a solid chance to KO outright. And there's a lot of good options that can actually outpace, a lot of good options that can naturally priority hit this. I did specifically mention the priority on Weavile, by the way, just so no one can mention that what if our caps is scarfed? This would get around it either way. Uh, even still, there's a lot of good Fizz Diff switches to Hippowdon stuff like on a, to our caps such as Hippowdon, for example. I think Hippowdon can actually see a pretty good search in usage as a check to our caps actually. Uh, another good Pokemon would be Garchomp. Garchomp could take the hits fairly well, at least. Uh, but for what it's worth, Garchomp would still... It still wouldn't really be able to, like, Oko it back, necessarily. But as far as Arcaps goes, if we were to look at a physical set and throw on, like, a Head Smash, for example, Head Smash from a not-boosting item would still be a 3 KO. So again, could be kind of a check. And also, defensive Garchomp exists. So there are a lot of sets that I think could actually make this a fairly balanced Pokemon but still a really good one to know you. Uh, that doesn't even get into any of the faster, naturally offensive checks, such as Coco, for example. So there would be enough, in my opinion, to make this actually kind of work. Next up, though, uh, we got a suggestion from Incog, which was to give some more Pokemon Shield Dust. And I think I found the perfect target, actually, to give a Shield Dust option to. Something that really could benefit from it a lot, while still actually being a fairly decent option, uh, being a Selgor. Now, Selgor has three pretty okay abilities. Uh, for one, you have the option of Unburden. You also have Hydration and Sticky Hold. Uh, Hydration's okay. It's not really that great on a Selgor. It doesn't really matter. Sticky Hold is kind of cool since you can guarantee keep the Focus Sash, which is something, but it doesn't really matter a lot on a Selgor either. Uh, it is pretty cool for Choice Spec sets, to be fair. Uh, that Just making sure that you never lose them is something that's actually pretty cool. Uh, and then Unburden, I mean... Unburden's um, kind of nice in this, but it doesn't really matter when you're 145 speed and you're already faster than most Pokemon, and you're even faster than a handful of Scarfers too once you get into lower tiers, so it doesn't really matter to have the Unburden. It's pretty redundant. But Shield Dust, though, could actually be pretty cool in some Spike sets. Uh, this is the standard choice spike, uh, the Spiker set, actually, as far as low tiers go. This is Spike's Final Gambit, Encore, and Infestation, which is sometimes substituted out for Yawn. Uh, but I think a shield to set on this would actually be pretty cool. You know, you could avoid fake out potentially. And also just making sure you are the perfect suicide lead. Basically, only really susceptible taunt at this point. I think shield us could actually be amazing on a Pokemon like this. However, there are some other options as well, such as Galvantula, I think that could also take advantage of this. But I figured that none of them really hold a candle to how much a Selgor specifically benefits from this. Because even with an option like Galvantula, it has some pretty good abilities already, like Compound Eyes, for example. So... I don't really think it's necessary on a Pokemon like that, but I think a Selgor, if you're going to give it to any Pokemon, there's not a better candidate in my opinion to take advantage of Shield Dust. 
Next up though, we have a suggestion from Josh, aka Ultra Player, who suggested to give Magic Guard to Orb Beetle. And I think this could be a pretty good option actually for Orb Beetle, since currently its abilities don't really serve it a lot of use. I mean, Frisk is kind of cool actually, to be fair, to scout for items. Swarm doesn't really matter, you're typically finding this as a screens option or a baton pass Pokemon anyway. And Telepathy, it's cool for doubles, but even still, no one really uses Orb Beetle in doubles. Even as a G Max Pokemon, no one really uses Orb Beetle in doubles. But Magic Guard could be pretty cool actually, as far as a singles perspective goes. Has the options with stuff like dual screens, for example, and also sticky webs, you could always make this a calm mind option as well and try and sweep that way. Iron Defense Body Press could be pretty cool since you could run a leftovers on it and get some nice passive recovery while still not worrying about stealth rocks. So there are a lot of options in my opinion that Orbeetle could run that could actually take advantage of Magic Card pretty terrifyingly. So I do think this would actually be a pretty cool one. I'll be, I still think Orbeetle would be a lower tier Pokemon, but I think it's a Pokemon that could actually have some actual viability as far as low tiers go if it had Magic Card since right now its abilities are not doing it any favors in singles. Next up though, we do have an option from Bloodcrawler who suggested give Flygon Timid Lens, and I think this could actually be a pretty cool option. Edgequake already has very few switch-ins, and being able to give Dragon Net sets like this a really good offensive presence could actually be really nice since Flygon already only has like 100 attack. Uh, especially with Outrage and Tandem, you would be able to really take advantage of a lot of different Pokemon, in my personal opinion, since Earthquake would now have a lot less switch in since the Grass Resists wouldn't necessarily be able to switch in as easily, and you'd basically be forced to switch in a Flying type once you get this thing plus one boosted, which then still worries about Stone Edge. So I do think this could actually be a pretty cool option. Uh, there are a lot of other moves you would draw on specifically, depending on what was being ran in the tier that Flygon was in. For example, Fire Fang could be a pretty cool option. Since even as far as uh, Earthquake goes, Fire Fang would still probably do more, or Fire Punch actually, I forgot, this gets the punches. Uh, but Fire Punch would probably still be a better option for something like a Ferrothorn, for example. But the point being is you have a lot of different moves you could run on this set to make it still work as far as Tinder Lens one goes. And I don't think this would make it necessarily OU or anything, but I think it would at least be a better low tier Pokemon, which is definitely still something that is noteworthy since Flygon's been falling out of usage significantly as generations went on. So why not give it a little bit of a buff? Especially since they even gave Gengar another ability now, may as well make it so Levitators no longer just the only ability a lot of these Levitators have. Uh, next up though, we do have a suggestion courtesy of Burgo, and I think this might actually be the most broken suggestion we have today, being Chlorophyll Roserade, which honestly was pretty terrifying when I ran some of the calcs for this. This would be a really fast Chlorophyll Sweeper. It would be the most, it would probably be the most viable Sun Sweeper actually, considering you'd be faster than Venusaur, you would hit harder than Venusaur, and all of the other Sun Sweepers already have competition issues with Venusaur. Uh, as far as VGC goes, you could still run Sleep Powder on this as a fourth move and do Venusaur's job entirely. Uh, really, the only use Venusaur would actually have over Roserade is the Max uh, G Max Vine Lash. Specifically, it would really be the only actual use it would have. But Roserade could still set its own terrain, which would be pretty good, and it would at least give some competition. Uh, as far as singles goes though, this would actually be really good in OU in my opinion. You'd be able to outpace options such as Toxic, uh, no, not Toxpex, uh, you'd be able to outpace options such as Excadrill for example, and still damage Pokemon like Toxpex for some fairly good damage, a lot of common OU Fairies, a lot of common OU Steels, though to be fair Heatran would fall this thing to all hell and back, which is again an, a niche that Venusaur would have over this, it could hit Heatran pretty well. But at the same time though, this does have one benefit actually, of forcing Hawlucha to go faster. Hawlucha would have to run an, action, an extra 16 speed actually to outpace Roserade if it did have any OU presence. Uh, even if we do take out, let's say, any sort of Heatran Medicaid, what about a UU tier where Heatran is not in the tier? Well, if we were to look at UU usage versus Roserade, uh, I do think this would actually be a pretty cool Pokemon. Uh, let me really quickly actually set this to a standard UU tier, and we'll see how deadly this could be. So, as far as UU goes, uh, there would not really be any actual reliable long-term switch-ins, since, for example, you would have, as far as fire switch-ins go, you would have a lot of different water types. Those, no, no water type in UU really actually would switch in on the grass and poison combination. Besides, maybe Tentacruel would be a pretty good neutral option. Uh, as far as the steel types go, all of the steel types in this tier are susceptible to Weather Ball. Stuff like Excadrill, for example, Celesteela, for example. So this mod could actually be a pretty good menace. Uh, the one big switch into this in the lower tiers would actually be Hydreigon, weirdly enough. But Hydreigon still has to worry about Dazzling Gleam on this set, which could still actually be a pretty viable move for Rosary to run, especially in a tier like UU. So this could actually be a really terrifying Pokemon, in my personal opinion, to really start tearing up in the lower tiers. Or even still be a pretty niche Pokemon in OU, in my personal opinion. Since this would actually be a really good killer to stuff like a Tapu's, 
Uh, it would be really good for really just a lot of offensive teams. Next up though, we do have a suggestion from Lucan. This is actually one of two suggestions from Lucan. I thought they were both really good, so I just want to include them. But this was a contrary grap locked. So grab blocked, I think, could actually be a pretty cool option to take advantage of this with close combat and superpower, both being ways to boost defenses and also offense. Uh, you would have two really high base power fighting moves that could do a lot of damage and continue boosting damage or continue boosting defenses. Ice Punch would be great as an option to take on something like, for example, Lado T if you were to run this, and Liquidation would be pretty okay. I mean, to be fair, this last move could be anything. It didn't really need a ground move, and I figured if nothing else, this is slightly stronger than Ice Punch for ground options. Though, to be fair, you could always make this an option, like, uh, you could probably go Circle Throw if you really wanted to use this as a phasing option. You could go a Pain Split. Sucker Punch could also be good. You have a lot of options. In fact, actually, Sucker Punch would probably be better. Let me put that on the set, because this would give you actual priority when your speed would still be fairly low, sadly. Uh, this would also be pretty good as far as taking advantage of Sticky Webs, especially as far as lower tiers go. There are a lot of different bug types that could potentially set them. So I do think a grab block could actually be a pretty cool option, and Contrary would be an amazing ability for this Pokemon in my opinion. But I do have one more Pokemon that I want to go over today, being Absol. Now Absol's been left in the in the in the shadows, for lack of a better pun, for a long time now. So giving this Pokemon potentially Dark Aura could actually be a really good buff for this. This is the signature ability of a Veltal, and I did want to try and steer away from signatures. But Dark Aura was something that I felt like a lot of low tier Dark types could benefit from. And I think that Absol would actually be a really cool option to take advantage of this. With options like Sucker Punch and Knock Off, this could be a really good breaker with 130 attack. You have some pretty good coverage options for that last move slot on a Sword Dance set or even a Choice Bandit set with stuff like Close Combat, Play Rough. So I do think this would have a lot of options and especially having the coverage for other Dark types since Dark Aura does boost both your own and your opponent's Dark type boosts. So having ways of taking advantage of opponent's dark types could actually be really good for Absol in my opinion. And I do think this would actually be a really cool low tier dark type. Uh, Absol currently, I believe it's like a PU. Yeah, it's, it's a literal PU dark type. I think this would at least go to NU, if not RU even, with Dark Aura, considering this would be a really solid option to boost its already strong dark type moves. But let me know what you guys think. What Pokemon do you think deserved better abilities? Or if you want to answer next week's question instead, what Pokemon do you think deserves some better stat buffs? With that said, though, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like below and subscribe for more just like this. Uh, with that said, thank you to our channel members being Zeke Zero, Josh JK Ultra Player, and Mia. You guys go the extra mile and support the channel, and I really do appreciate it. With that said, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Until then, peace out, guys.